Okay then, so what I'm going to do next is the Terminators from the Age of Darkness. Now, I'm going to assume that's pronounced Cataphracti Terminator. And what I've done is the actual instructions, if I just show you, they kind of tell you to put all the legs together. And then all the different bits. And it can get very, very complicated. So what I've done is on my sprue here, I've kind of planned out colour comboed which bits are going where on the model and um, I'm going to start out uh, I'm going to just I'm not going to build the legs all individually then build all the, the torsos individually I'm going to go through one at a time so I'm going to start off with the cataphracty sergeant and I'm going to go for pose two which has a sword and a, a twin linked storm bolter so now I've got to remember my colour combinations. So with this, I decided to go for blue as the colour combination for the sergeant. Um, so I've already picked out his legs and that's where I'm actually going to start. So 18, 19, 20. Uh, the only problem with this is the sprue's kite big and bulky. And I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't sort of float off frame while I'm working on it. So 18, 19 and 20. I'm just gonna cut all these off as I go. And then, as always, make sure that you're cleaning your models properly when you've uh, even even the bits that are going to be hidden. Make sure that you're showing them. Now, one thing I did notice straight away about this kit is it really does have a lot of versatility. I am really pleased about that, um, considering that. For a lot of people, models like the Terminators, uh, they're really, uh, they're really very good hero pieces. You know, you you want them to be the focus of attention, and you don't want them to seem or feel like they're all just identical. So I'm very pleased about the sort of flexibility of this part of the kit. It also means that you can go away and you can get the add-ons so obviously if you've got any bits from forge world unfortunately i don't otherwise i'll show you how to do one of them and you can actually get different types of body uh you know depending on which legion you want which i do like but i think if you are going to do that if you're going to get the forge world ones you might not want them all to have those bodies it's that kind of if you make every single one of them look special, then they're not going to stand out as obvious. I'm just going to see if he sits comfortably on that base, yeah. I mean, I love how big that base is. I could really do a lot of stuff with that big base. Now, as a rule, I wouldn't want to be gluing this part on straight away because obviously I like to paint with an airbrush and things like this get in the way of doing those details. But I promised myself I would do it, film myself making every single one of these. It's not like it's going this one, does it? I promised myself I'll film myself doing every single one of these, so here we go. I'm uh, gonna have to put it on now. It's got weird fitting that, hasn't it? it? Just feels like it doesn't really like to go in easily. <laughs> Not at all, actually. Yes, yeah, fight me. This thing is go in. Hmm. It's definitely a tight fit. That as you can see, it kind of like. Kind of get it to slide in just right. 
so that it kind of sits. So it won't click all the way in. It's designed to sit, tick, um, tick, to fit slightly outwards. Okay. Okay. Now that I've got that kind of drying, I'm going to then move on to preparing the actual torso. Again, a good thing is you've got a selection of torsos here. You've actually got six in total. And then they're going to go on these. Now, these are on numbered seven anyway. So it doesn't matter which one you attach it onto, as long as it's a number seven. my number seven and over here I'm doing torso number six front oh, I love the fact that it's got a kind of arch over the top but I can tell when I'm going in to cut it feel it's very fragile as well so I'm going to have to be very careful here while I'm cleaning it up otherwise I think it's going to end up breaking see that it's got like quite interesting ridge design on the back as well and that's making it a lot harder to clean up and obviously if I made the mistake of not realizing that on the back I could have ended up cutting it off okay there we go though that's fine make sure that I uh, trim down those edges make it nice and clean and smooth absolutely love these models by the way uh, I love the fact that you can get an Abaddon model in these beautiful armour sets because he looks great in these armour he really does and then when you look at his um, I suppose you could call it his um, ascended form his uh, chaos uh, what's it called now My is it Mark Achaeus Ascendant that Horus has? And I think that's what Abaddon has, isn't it? He has the, the mark of all the Chaos Gods later on. And he's got that armour that's more modern. And I'd love to see someone do a you know proper piece of work to put the fully Ascendant Abaddon in this kind of armour. Unfortunately, that's beyond my skill level. Okay. Right, now, good thing is, because you've got a lot of flexibility in these, which I really like, you can uh, put it into more than just one boring standardised pose, so you can really think about it. The only thing is, you will find that it'll, f it'll kind of naturally sit in a particular way, and if you try and push it one too far one way or the other it just looks a bit weird but you do have a bit of wiggle room so I've got him facing slightly down his own leg there can you see so slightly twisted foot and then hopefully when I put his sword and his uh, weapon on it's gonna really sort of come together nicely Okay, I think the, the next little bit that I want to put onto him then is start kind of tidying up the bolt guns here. So he's just going to have his standard storm bolter. I 
I think everyone loves these from Terminators. I've never I've never heard anyone say, "Oh, I really I really don't like the look of Stone Bottlers on Terminators." I think they've always looked really really good. It just adds to that impression that they're even more super powerful. <laughs> So things don't fall on the floor. Yeah. I feel like what I should do is drill that barrel out, but I'll have to do that later on when I'm not doing this kind of tutorial quite nice though I'm not certain I've got a drill bit that's small enough for that one I think later on I'm going to have a look as well at, you know, the Death Guard models that I've actually got. Because I'd be really... One thing that I have found about the Death Guard is if you look at the models, they, they really do hark back to the Horus Heresy era in their design aesthetic. And obviously, I love that that's deliberate to give them a feeling that they really are old. Okay. And for the actual sergeant, what we need to do is we need to use the arm 40. So let's have a look here. I'm sure I over here. And that's just to give him the pose that we want. Now, although these arms are pretty universal as far as fitting is concerned... So obviously this arm will fit any any bolter and then it'll fit on any torso. Which is great if you don't want to use the same torso and pose that I've used on mine. It's perfectly fine. But I do think that particularly for the sergeant, this is very much the arm that you should be using. Make sure that that goes together nicely. Make sure that I get the positioning right. I'm going to let that dry for a bit before I try and attach it. And while that's drying up, I'm going to go and get the sword arm, which is over here, 43. Because of the way that it's on the sprue, it gives this slight little clip there, which shouldn't be on. Okay, there we go. And then this can just go straight. Oh, there we go, got it. Okay, and then pop this on here. Now, obviously, arm positioning, you've got to think about how you want him to be, think, uh, 
really posed. So an arm upwards may, may seem great, but this bolt, storm bolter, is also going to be upright. And as you can see, it just, I don't know, for me that looks too unusual. It looks like very strange, like it's in completely the wrong place. And I think from what I can see on the the diagram, it does feel like they want it more in a downwards position. Now when I put this one up, look at that, there's actually like a hole in there. And you'd feel that they would have designed it with a hole there, wouldn't uh, with a like a pin popping out of it. Now, what I would say is that would allow you to pin it quite easily if you wanted to. So if you're inclined to pin your models, you've got the option pretty much built onto the kit to begin with. You can see those because without a pin in place, without kind of that positioning properly it's hard to gauge oh to keep the arms on the same height so that would have been a useful addition to this model I mean they've done it on the arms so I don't know why they didn't just carry it on and put an actual connector connecting rod on either side of it and that would have made it so much easier to put together and keep the arms in a good position okay I think the next thing I want to put on here then is his head, which I've chosen this one over here. Now, because this guy is going to be the Imperial Fist, because this whole unit is going to be the Imperial Fists, I just personally prefer them to have all helmets. I just think it looks better with them. I can't wait to start doing my Night Lords for this project, because that is going to be so much fun. Um, it's also going to be a lot of work, but whereas I want my Imperial Fists to appear prim and proper, my Night Lords are going to be completely lazy. Uh, I'm going to try and look, make them look as lazy and careless as possible. Okay, so this helmet now, got to kind of get it sliding into there nicely. Now, again, head positioning is very important because with this one actually aiming in a direction I've got to make sure that his head feels like it's naturally looking towards the barrel of the gun yeah I think that's about right it's kind of got a slight tilt to it and he looks like he's looking where he's aiming now, okay, next I'm going to move on to putting the shoulder guards on. So there's two shoulder guards that you have to put on this. And you have to start off with the smaller ones and then build up to the bigger ones. So you're a bit scattered around. Number 60 is over here. And 60 is, I'm just trying to get my left and right correct there, it's on the right side of the model. I think what I'll do is so I don't get them confused, I'm going to put this on straight away. So, Sixty, and then that goes on the right. 
is very important if you don't put this in the right place it's just not gonna click later on you should be able to feel it kind of hook in on the other side of the arm I'll get myself the 61 from over here it doesn't actually matter which 60s and 61s because they're all identical same with the 62s and 63s they're all the same quite amazing how long this is taking to build um, obviously <laughs> longer than I expected but okay it's quite complex so many different parts on this one I mean I love how they look like um, a scaled down version of the contempt to dreadnought I do love that aesthetic that follows through and they do look very good these um, alongside I would probably say particularly the mark 3 armor I think they've got that kind of um, carrying on aesthetic okay um, so the oh we're almost done now uh, we've got this little thing on top now based upon what I've read so far so it's number 70 and 69 i think this might be the grenade harness that's mentioned in the kind of instructions so technically i think this is optional but I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to take it. In fact, if I if I if I'm quite honest, what I'm really disappointed about and what I'm really sad about is that you don't get those um, <laughs> missile launcher rack that you you can get on some Terminators. You know the one I'm on about. Um, some of the older style plastic ones had it on. Uh, you would have a missile rack on the back of one of your Terminators and that would just add a hell of a lot of punch. It's probably something you can get as a an add-on for the unit, I'm guessing. Okay. There we go. So you just got a that's popped together it does look potentially like some kind of rack and now while that's dried a little bit now i'm going to then pop off and get what have we now 62 and 63 now 62 goes to the right 63 on the left I have to admit that creates a very nice look to it the kind of when when I look at it on the box too much glue there it does actually create a nice look to it this again now you can see here that there's a little upwards indent on the shoulder pad so as you push this down it should feel like it naturally locks into it now the only thing I would say is it doesn't kind of stop you putting it anywhere in particular on this and so I think what you need to do is kind of work out where it looks balanced across the back and the front but I 
think I do might need to move this back a tiny bit more. Let's see. Because while that's gluing, I'm just going to get one last piece off here. And it's basically just a little, tiny little shield. Let me just find it again. Yeah, over here. So it's 68. I said it's tan basically it looks like a tiny little shield. And it's just, see, just like a little, it's hard to get focused on the camera. It's just like a tiny little heraldry, heraldry shield. Um, what it does is it's going to go on this side. It's actually going to go on the left. Now, what I'm trying, what I can see is you can see here. There's like a slight cut out on this side. You should be able to see it anyway. See, and it'll basically go and fit inside that. The reason I'm putting this on before I put the other arc on is if I get the forget the this in uh, the shoulder pad in the wrong place. Then this isn't going to go on at all. So I'm thinking if I put it on now, it kind of locks the position. And then when I put this other one on, this 63 here, that I don't over glue this and it's just because just in case for some reason while I'm painting it I realize I need to take that thing off basically that's all it is because on very rare occasions I've been painting away and I've realized that something just does not fit the way it, I think it should do and you know what just one more little bit to go and that's our little thing here and I just oh, now let me work out which way around this goes on. Looks like it goes on this way. And then it kind of sits, it feels like it kind of sits a little bit further back down the armour. I don't know whether or not I would want that all the way up. Oop. I'll push downwards a bit more. I think it I think what you do is it connects to that little back one there. Yeah, there we go. And then so it connects to that little back one there. It's, straight there we go okay and there we go that's our sergeant finished for the terminator squad